will you be a positive ripple effect in your community? Well, if you understand the good side of obsessive thinking, maybe you will. So hi, I'm Dr. Lisa Ann Homick from Homick Advanced Chiropractic, and this is Brain Snob, episode number 42. I want everybody to be a brain snob. Being a brain snob is not an insult, it's a high compliment. It means you know a great deal about the brain so that you can give yourself amazing life experiences. After all, a burdened brain is a disease magnet, not to mention lost talent. And we need you. We need your full participation in this world. We really do. And a performing brain can definitely change the world. Your brain makes your body and you make your life. So let's start at the top. After all, the brain and the nervous system are the master systems. Let's go right to the top. So why am I obsessed with obsessive thinking? Because some days I feel like I'm obsessed. I, well, I, let's just admit it. I do have obsessiveness in the things I think about. So everybody looks at that as a negative. But if you think about it, it's a positive. Obsessive thinking has changed how we live our lives. There's a lot of positive impact on the way we live because of people who had these obsessive thoughts where they just couldn't quit thinking about something. And if you look at all the great inventions that you are benefiting from today, that is because of somebody who just would not quit. They wouldn't give up on their idea. So we need to always have ideas and thoughts that take us higher and higher take us to through new challenges because that's how we keep the brain healthy is to challenge the brain we challenge the brain with uh, with learning new things taking new habits taking on new habits musical instruments teaching yourself something every time you teach yourself something you are building more connections in the brain so when i look back at some wild and amazing uh, inventions. You think of the Wright brothers. They were persistent. Everyone said, no way, no way. We, we are going to keep our feet on the ground. That's just the way it is. And they, they told everybody, forget it. We are going to keep working on this. We have to. They said, we just, we just know. It's, it's, it was in their blood. They just could not stop. They had to keep experimenting. And look, Look at how high we are up in the sky, in the atmosphere, with planes and satellites and a spacecraft. It, unbelievable. Unbelievable. But that's because people wouldn't give up. Thomas Edison, what was his famous saying? Uh, he threw out a thousand failures, but he said, no, they weren't failures. They were directing him in the, in the direction he needed to go. He knew where to move ahead instead of being stuck in the stuff that didn't work. The woman who invented the dishwasher, I don't know her name. Look it up on Wikipedia, but the invention of the dishwasher, yeah, great, great thing. So what am I obsessed with? I'm obsessed with brain health and the things you can do to support your brain because what, it, what are the number one causes of death? What are the top causes of death? And people are going to say, well, it's heart disease, it's cancer. And, and that's what you can find. I, I've got this article here about life, dis, life expectancy, and it's decreasing in the United States. Can you believe that? All the inventions we have and life expectancy is decreasing. But it says here, uh, unintentional injury, yeah, that's a big deal. Cancer and heart disease and chronic liver disease are the top causes of death. So I want to give you another thought to obsess over. But what if it's cancer and heart disease? We know that and it's terrible. We don't sometimes we don't want to think about it. We almost avoid the issue because well if I think about it I might get it. And I want you to look at health in a different manner instead of looking at symptoms and and sometimes we just want to get rid of our symptoms rather than talking about death we just want to take our symptoms and treat them and that and leave it at that because there's there's less involved and maybe less less brain activity meaning we think less about it cuz avoidance is sometimes 
our way of coping. It's not the best way to cope, but what if I said the number one cause of death is actually when your brain is separated from your body? Yeah, I guess that's a good definition of cancer. That's a good definition of heart disease. When your brain is separated from your organs, there will be death. And um, when you have reached the point where your tissues are so uh, resistant and the reserves are gone and depleted down to zero, if your tissue reserves are so weak that they can't even handle nerve energy coming from the brain, that's death. And even nerve cells can become damaged. The brain can become damaged. Those uh, nerve pathways where all the signals are traveling, they also lose their tissue resilience and tissue reserve. Oh, this is so negative and depressing. Let's get away from that. Because I want to focus on all the obsessive thinking that got us into good places. Those inventions, the airplane, uh, the car, the dishwasher, the washing machine, your tablet that you might be holding in your hands right now to watch this video, the telephone that lets you move money from one bank to another bank that could be thousands of miles away. Who could imagine that? We have so many neat things in our lives that make our lives easier. It happened because of somebody not wanting to give up on an invention and developing things and improving upon things. And I want you to have that obsessive thinking about your brain. Because for one thing, thoughts build your uh, networks in your brain. And let's make them positive thoughts and let's focus on health and healing. And let's focus on the brain, that master system. So I want you to move your brain, feed your brain, and talk to your brain. And that's what we do here in the office. The brain first always approach that I combine with chiropractic care. Chiropractic is care of the brain. That adjustment sends signals to the brain and helps the brain reorganize itself. And I've got information that explains that and I mentioned it on other YouTube videos. The first thing that changes with an adjustment is the brain and then the brain is able to incorporate changes to the rest of your body so when the stress response is coming down on us hard and we're dealing with the pressure of everyday life the stress response can be hampered we can improve we can heal we can re overcome certain stresses and that happens on a daily basis, hundreds and thousands of times a day. Every little stressor that your cells have to deal with, we have to overcome it with our protection plan. That's another video. We'll go back to about, I don't remember, 35, 34, 35, or 36. Your protection plan, how we overcome stress and how we get prepared for the next stress that's going to happen. Because stress never takes a day off, and neither should we. Our healing plan should be in place every day. And that's why the Brain First Always protocol was developed. And there's a lot of learning. There's a lot of teaching that's involved so you understand how your body works. Because that's the only way you can make smart decisions to help yourself. So how do we build a better brain? We do a lot of things, and one of the things right now is you're watching this YouTube video, and I want you to like it, so hit that little like thing, the little thumbs up, hit it right now. The subscribe button, click on it right now if you haven't done it. Make some comments in the comment section. There's other people out there who want to talk about brain health. And they want to talk about their successes, so that's why I make these videos, so you can have more contact with other brain obsessed people but also visit the blog it's called createpurpose.com watch the orientation video it's got very good basic information to get you started and become a brain snob so that you are a positive ripple effect in the world thanks for watching